In this screencast, we're going to look at the Spring Security Core plugin for Grails. After looking at the plugin, it may seem a little bit overwhelming at first um, because there's just a lot of information and a lot of great documentation on it, but we're going to go through it tonight and I promise you it's really easy to get going and get started. And then there are a lot of things that you can do to kind of customize it or add more plugins, plugins onto this particular plugin. Um, to kind of extend it, um, but we'll get into those into in future screencasts tonight. I just want to look at the core plugin, how to get started with it, and uh, and be able to use some type of authentication in your app right away. So this is the plugin. Uh, if you go to you know if you just search for Spring Security Core plugin, you'll find it right away, or or you can find it uh, by searching on the plugins on Grails.org. So we're going to come back to this in a second. I'm actually going to go over here to Terminal, uh, and I have a, we're going to fire up a brand new Grails app. So let's go ahead and create app. We'll say Spring Security Demo, just so you can see that it's nothing um, pre pre built or anything like that. It's really easy to get this going real quickly. So right now we're starting a new app which is basically going to download everything we need. Uh, if you saw earlier I'm running on the newest version which is 2.3.6. So let's go ahead and uh, let's jump into that demo. So if we're looking at that, um, that's our SS demo. So I'm actually going to come back over here and we're going to pop into an uh, IntelliJ here and open that project. So again, this is a brand new project. Here's our SS demo. Let's go ahead and choose that. Configure the SDK real quick. So there it is. Let's jump in there. So let's look at the Grails view. So the first thing that we're going to do is pop open the build config. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add this plugin. So anytime you add a new plugin, there used to be a way to, to install a plugin. This is the preferred method that you want to use now. So if we pop back over to the website, you're going to see there's a dependency. Um, and usually this is all you're going to have to do. So if we copy this and come back. Uh, we're going to stick that right under here. Oop. So put that in there. And then this actually isn't in the main um, Maven Central, so we just need one more thing. We need a custom repository that we're just going to copy this one as well and paste this right here. All right, so with that, um, so Grails configuration may be outdated outdated so you could either come back to terminal and um, uh, do a compile which will basically tell Grails hey something's changed I need to pull down some dependencies um, but I, uh, IntelliJ does a great job of picking this up so we're just gonna click that and it should basically run through the motions of oh hey we need to go pull some more in uh, some, some plugins down and, and do some configuration and compiling so You'll see it'll go through all this right now. It pulls down Spring Security. And we should be done. So you see it pulled all this fun stuff down. So in the midst of all that, there is this little warning or note that says you've installed the Spring Security Core plugin. Next, run the S2 quick start script to initialize it. So so now that it's installed, um, there's a, a way to basically run a script and kind of get everything kickstarted really quickly for you. Um, and it's in the documentation, but we're just going to pop over here. So if we go Grails S2 Quick Start. And basically, this takes three parameters it's going to take the package name of where you want to store these classes um, and then the user class and then the role class um, so it actually creates three of them user role and then user role but 
In this case, we're just going to say, let's say com.ssdemo.auth is our package name, and we're just going to use user and role. So this is going to fire up that quick start script. Again, it's going to create a bunch of stuff for us. Uh, most notably, it's going to create the user domain, the role domain, and then the user role domain. Um, and really, those are the three things that we need to get started. Um, and, and what we're going to do is we're going to go in and do a little configuring. Like I said, very little to get started. Um, actually, it writes out the, the, the basic configuration you need right away. Um, and then we'll just go make a few changes, and, and we can start using this in our app right away. So as soon as this is done, we'll hop back over. I just want to see this finish here. So boom, created security-related domain classes. All right, let's jump back over here. So now if we look in our domain classes, we now have a package called com.ssdemo.auth, and we have our user, user role, and role. So let's just pop into user. So really nothing crazy here. We have a username and password. Um, we'll look at customizing this in a future screencast, but for now, let's just let's just use everything that we've got here. Um, so we can also pop open to config dot groovy. Yeah, let me do this. There it is. Um, so it actually writes a couple things into the config file here. Um, these. Basically, these you won't have to change because these are what it, the S2 Quick Start script created for us. So all it's asking for is the user domain class is user, user role, and role. Um, this I'm actually going to add a line to here real quick because so this kind of controls, it's like an access list. They're really it's kind of up to you on where you do your accessing uh, you know lo uh, locking down particular classes from um, I normally don't use this here uh, I like to kind of put the access control on the class itself or the the action itself but in this clay this case I don't have the DB console scripts of you know without jumping into the plugins directly I, I, I when we get into actually seeing the records written down I want you to be able to see them and you won't be able to because it'll be it'll be everything's locked down by default. So I'm gonna add DB counts in there just so we can jump in and see these records created. So with that, uh, we should be ready to go. Uh, we're gonna add a couple. Let's first do this. Let's go ahead and open up Bootstrap. Oh, that's not the Bootstrap I wanted. Let's jump in here. So, uh, I want to go ahead and add a couple things. Basically, I just want to add a role uh, and a user and save that off. So, I'm going to go ahead and go, let's create a role and we're going to do this by, actually, I need to import those. So, we're going to import, what was it, com.ssdemo.auth.star. So now we can say role, we want to find or save where. Um, so basically find or save where just, just tries to find a role based on the properties that you pass in this map. So I'm just going to say authority is one of them. So I'm going to say role admin. So basically if it doesn't find it there, it's going to create a new one for you, which is pretty nice. So I'm going to do the same for user. Save where? So we'll go with a. Uh, what do we need? We need a username, and we'll just do my email address. Oops. And we'll do a password. Uh, password. We'll just go real weak here. So we have an, uh, uh, a role, we have a user, and we need to kind of tie those together with our user role. So, so we're going to say if the user authorities dot contains, yeah, actually we're going to say if not. Uh, so we're going to say basically if the user does not have this role, let's go ahead and create it. So now we use our user role dot create. 
and so we pass it a user we're gonna pass it a role and the last one is flush so we'll say true so uh, you may have seen some previous uh, screencasts or tutorials um, where you needed to basically like encode the password and then set the account uh, the user to enabled uh, you don't have to do any of that stuff now the password is actually encoded um, before insert using some some magic on the class and then the uh, user account is enabled by default so in this case it's going to be enabled so that's all we have to do to get a user into the database so now let's go ahead and start this up so we'll go run so hopefully if this works um, this should load up right away. Uh, it's basically going to create one admin role and one user role. And it's going to uh, go ahead and, and add the user role permissions for us. So in the in just this screencast, I just want to go ahead and jump into the application. And we'll just make sure that that information was added to the DB. No big deal though, should still start up. It's the first time that we're doing this, so it's going to take a second. basically when it's done it'll give us a little link here that we can just click on right from here uh, and we'll jump into the browser so that fired up localhost 8080 SS demo this is the uh, welcome screen for the grails app I'm sure you're used to using uh, but I'm actually gonna jump into DB console because I want you to see the records that it created so you see, again, we didn't create, you know, we didn't create anything in the data. So by that S2 quick start creating those domain classes for us, it actually wrote out these tables. And then we have our user. So we have, um, again, it's enabled by default. The password is encrypted. Um, and then we have our username here. So if we jump into role, we'll see our admin role. And we have one record in there tying one role to our user. So that's kind of the very first part of this. Uh, in part two, uh, I'm going to come back and we're going to actually look at how to lock down particular classes. We'll create like a public class and a, or a public controller and a private controller and we'll see how to actually lock this down. So that's it for this one. Come back and look at the second part of this and I hope to have a lot more of these little screencasts in the near future.